Hello everyone, today I wanted to show off some of the latest updates to my Dynamic Shadows in Game Maker shader. So up here I've got this little demo set up. This is actually going to be part of the demo I release in the end. And what I've got is this zombie model here and this fence. Uh, the zombie model is actually from COD if you can't tell. I've actually taken one from a website which specializes in mods. Uh, this model was actually taken from a mod. I uh, optimized it in 3ds Max to bring down the polygon count and then animated it manually in Misfit Model 3D into the MD2 format and that's what is in here in GameMaker. Uh, there are a couple of DLLs which allow you to import MD2 models into GameMaker if you're wondering how to do that but as you can see the zombie's kind of stuck against the fence because he'll be trying to walk towards me uh, he can't rotate because he's actually stuck in the fence because I kind of just slapped together these uh, movements really quickly using a couple of objects I'd normally go all out and use proper 3D collisions but um, that is a bit time consuming so what I've got here now is the zombie and he follows the camera um, but biggest change I've had recently is the soft shadows as you can see here all these shadows are kind of softened now uh, they've got this sort of blurred edge to them and to be honest I think they look way way better than the previous ones if I just turn off the softness for now you can see the sharp edges uh, you can see that they get pixelated and uh, the reason the shadow glitches out there is because uh, the shadow is limited to a frostum shape so only things which are within the little thing you see on the side there in the uh, top left corner there's a little screen only things which are in that view will actually cast a shadow and everything else up there just messes up um, I'm be meaning to fix that, I'll probably make it so everything outside of the region is just either black or white haven't decided yet but um, as you can see without the smooth shading as you get further away the quality drops off really quickly um, whilst the smooth shading doesn't actually stop that from happening it does make it look a lot less subtle um, but so far I'm really liking this one of the things I actually fixed which was a bug I'll just bring this guy back over here so I can show you is um, self shadowing I didn't even realize this was a bug until recently when I tried to add the zombie in um, and I didn't realize the objects didn't actually cast shadows properly onto themselves um, until recently. But as you can see, if I rotate the camera, um, the way he's facing, and he's outside the camera now, so if I replace the light here, which is here, um, if I rotate him, like now he's walking towards the light and his hand is obstructing the view, you can see that it causes a shadow where his arm would be. And I really like that, and I think I've brought him outside the view again. Right, I'm just going to bring it uh, back over here. So, uh, yeah, if I uh, do the same again, now he's completely facing the opposite way to the light and his complete front body shaded. If I turn off smooth shading, this just looks really jagged up close. So, smooth shading does create this nice sort of garage shading on the mesh, um, which I really like. You can see there again, there's the arm. And this is a terrible camera. Oh, well. Um, you can see there the arm's casting a shadow. If I turn off the smooth shading again, it does look. It can look a bit cleaner in situations, but at the same time, it does look a bit pixelated. Um, this fence rail here is a quick model I whipped up, and as you can see, the fence is fully casting a shadow onto that block, and then the zombie, as it walks past, is casting a shadow onto the fence. Um, I can like ramp up the number of uh, what my samples in the uh, smooth uh, shadow softening. However, the more samples you have, the slower it gets. Um, comparative to regular, uh, this current setting is using 24 samples um, using the PCF technique, percentage close filtering, and is running at about 600 FPS on my machine as opposed to 900 without the smooth shading. So it's not that much of a performance hit really because FPS again isn't a great way of measuring uh, frame like performance, the best way to do it is see how much it takes for your performance to drop below 60. So, I mean, this is the sort of thing you could have in a game if you wanted to have even smoother shadows, you could whack the samples up even more and get an even softer, like a softer, smooth edge. Um, the sample rate basically defines how many like layers there are smoothing from maximum to minimum, and uh, you can also def like change the soft radius. At the moment, the soft radius is pretty small at 0.5 units and so all this really does is literally just smooth the very edge if you whack that up to two or so units then um, that will almost blur the shadow completely and create a sort of blob below the object so and then there's everything in between that uh, so it's really up to you how you want to customize it but um, I personally like this setting and just rotating the uh, light now um, but yeah I'm really pleased with how this is turning out I'm trying to 
convince some of the mathematical experts over on the forums to try and help implement some of the methods which allow you to not lose shadow quality over distance, things like the parallel split cascaded shadow maps. I have no idea how you do that. I'm just pff, way over my head. Um, but yeah, I got this working, so I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, if you're interested, this current version is written in GLSL, um, OpenGL Shader Language, I assume. Um, and it's actually running the ES version, so this would be completely portable to mobile devices. Whether it'd run on those is another question, but I might actually try. <laughs> um, the only thing that wouldn't work on this is the animation, just because it uses a DLL to import the MD2 and using straight up file functions would probably just be too slow um, whilst possible, just slow um, so yeah, I'll probably steer away from that but you know, I'm actually try this on the mobile, see how it performs I assume if you like whack down the settings, lower the size of the uh, texture map and use just regular sharp shaders, it probably wouldn't be too bad um, this only involves, well, it involves rendering the projection twice but the actual shader doesn't even do that much, it's just a simple comparison check which isn't really that intensive although I assume shaders aren't really that quick without a graphics card. Uh, the only other thing I've tried this on is my laptop and uh, my laptop hasn't got a graphics card it's just got a processor in it. It seems to run relatively well. Um, obviously my laptop kind of gets slow the more textures you have the more objects you have so if you can keep that to a minimum the better. Um, I generally just use one map model rather than multiple. Um, in here I've got four models at the moment, uh, not including the zombies, so I've got this little fence model here, the block models, the little tree trunk log things, and then the grass. Um, but yeah, actually one of the things which doesn't look so great with um, this technique is if I go up to the grass, you can see that smoothing the grass, it just doesn't look all that great with shadows. You have to get really close uh, to really notice the detail. From far away, you can see that it kind of just blurs and creates this little blur below the grass and yeah sure it does help to add detail and I mean the grass blades are so thin anyway that they're barely going to cast much of a shadow um, but now that self shadowing is working um, one thing that's changed is now that when something's actually uh, like sort of overlooking the grass it'll actually cast a shadow onto the grass which looks a lot better than it used to um, so yeah this is constantly getting improving I'm not sure when I'll be able to get the demo out I'm hoping next weekend I should be able to get it done by. Um, there's just a nice little demo of how the shadow gets cast against the wall for the zombie. Um, and you know what? I'm going to crack in a couple more zombies because why the hell not? Um, so here we've just got a plethora of zombies. Um, let's bring them, let's put this light down here and just bring these guys around. So yeah, as you can see, the zombies are all like all casting shadows onto each other and it does look really nice. Like if you compare this to other 3D game maker games, and just like comparing the standard, it's just incredible how this has actually turned out. And I still can't believe that it's actually working. Um, and more so than I'm the one who's actually gone and done it. But either way, uh, this should be really good when it gets released. And I, I cannot stress how easy this is to implement. Um, if your game set up so everything drawn is just called from one script, so I always I've always done this anyway, where I've had one script where everything's just rendered, so it renders the camera, then it just goes through a list rendering everything else, but all in one script. If you've got something like that, then you can literally just recall that script and render it from the light uh, perspective, uh, then just render the regular projection using a shader, and you're set. This will just work. Um, it's really really nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just stand behind here and uh, show that cool kind of effect and I think the zombies are all getting stuck in each other, yeah. What would you expect there? They're zombies, they, they try and eat brains because they don't have one. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out and I can't wait to be able to get a demo out showing off this awesome, awesome uh, thing just because it's, it's so cool. Um, I'm kind of want to actually try like combining this with some other shaders like normal mapping. Um, I can see it being a little bit challenging simply because it's hard to call more than one shader at once and be efficient about it. Another kind of flaw of the system is uh, one at the moment it only supports one light. Uh, in order to have multiple lights, you basically need to uh, render the projection one extra time for each light you want. Um, if you wanted to do, say, like a point light or something, uh, that would be a little bit trickier because that would actually require six redraws of the environment, which I can imagine would get a little bit slow. So I wouldn't really recommend using point lights. Um, 
unless you're willing to redraw the world loads of times or you've got a really optimized script which only draws exactly what's in view uh, then that might work out for you but um, using a current setup if you're just redrawing the same thing over and over again that can get quite slow quite quickly um, because one of the things that really slows down 3D rendering isn't necessarily what you're trying to render you could render a million polys in Game Maker and it wouldn't really um, like wouldn't really be that much uh, performance drop. The performance drop comes from the draw call so if you're trying to render hundreds of individual objects um, that's when you really start to get a real noticeable performance hit um, and in Game Maker. I mean obviously yeah, Game Maker is not built for 3D but it's it's really fun just to get stuff like this to actually work properly. Um, it's one of the first, first of its kind. Um, Ultimate 3D and the Ogre extension have done this before but this is the first time in native game maker that I've actually seen proper 3D shadows. Um, yeah you can there are little ones where you can fake them so you can just sort of fake cast them. However true sort of self casting and self shadowing of the objects themselves I think is first okay these guys are just basically stuck together but yeah uh, just to show off one more time as you can see his arm there's obstructing the light and then you can see his arm blocking out his light on himself. Uh, turn off smooth shading again, it's a bit jagged, so yeah, it's it's all good. I hope to be able to post another update for this in a couple of days' time. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.